Let him know that we are with him. God will take the limits off this young man. And we'll see God do things that we have never seen before. Amen. So let's stand and welcome, amen, our main speaker for the night. Amen, Brother Johnny Edwards. Hallelujah. Hey, amen, amen. That was a good introduction. I like all that. I like that. <laughs> no, I, I want y'all to continuously stand because we're going to read the word. Now, I'm, I'm going I'm to give you a disclaimer before I start. It's going to be touchy. And it's going to challenge you, and it's going to pry, it's going to pull, but it's designed to do that. But if y'all want to grow, who want to grow in here today? Who want God to move and expect God to move? Then he hears you, and he is going to move tonight. He already told me. He don't need to use any of us. It's him that does it. He can use anybody. But I'm so glad he used me, because I'm going to be listening as he talks to us. So we're reading from Matthew chapter 21. Verses 12 through 13. This is Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out and drove out all the ones who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you're making it a den of robbers. I want to sing this a little bit because we're going to take it back to the old school. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. One more time, y'all. Let's sing it. Hey, this little light of mine. Hey, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. Hey, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. That's that old one, ain't it? That's the old stuff there. That's back with Grandma. Grandpa used to take us to church. Y'all can sit on down because it's going to get deep from here. Y'all might want to brace your legs. <laughs> but that's that. That's when church in the temple, Grandma and Grandpa took us to church. Especially from the south, you had to go. I don't care what you did on Saturday night. Grandma then woke you up. They said, but hey, listen, you can get a world all that. You better go on to the church. You, we getting up and we going together. But that's when we went to church and we expected God to move. That's when we were excited to go. We were excited to get in the choir, praise team. We always knew that God was going to move. You see, the temple was a place where people came to worship God. Preparing them to become a holy place on the earth. But somehow, somewhere, the temple, the church, became tainted and wildered. Some would dare say that we were pushing Jesus out and letting Satan in. We began turning it into a place of self-gratification. A place where they could, we could gain power, gain titles, and we can push our own agendas. A place we could control. Becoming less about God, his love, his healing, deliverance, and forgiveness. And we've adopted a culture of personal gain, worldliness, and validation. The same thing is happening in the churches today. Instead of it being about God's house of prayer, it's became a commonplace, a marketplace, a den of robbers. No different than the world. No power. No strength. Nobody's leaving delivered. And half of the time, you can't really find a pastor that's preaching the word of God. Jesus told them in the temple, you're turning my house of prayer into a den of robbers. And here are some things we're going to discuss today so we can keep God's house in order. Remember, the world is going to love you. 
as long as you ain't standing on the word of God or preaching it. <laughs> and know the devil can come into church with you. And the last point we're going to discuss today is everything has to submit to the word of God. Now, before we get into this, I want to give you a backstory of how we even got to the, to, to the temple and why Jesus was even upset with them. So this event took place right before the Passover feast. So the Passover feast was a, a cedar festival, a, a meal celebrated by Jews to commemorate the mercy God spared. He was sparing on them because of the plagues of the firstborn son, the killing of the firstborn son in Egypt, and reminding them of their freedom from slavery. So the entire meal was symbolic. And the eating, as they were eating, they, they talked about the Israel's freedom. Jesus celebrates the cedar, the ritual Passover meal, with his closest followers. Now, the centerpiece of this meal was the Passover sacrifice, was the lamb itself. Now, now, guess where the only place you can get this lamb? The temple. So the Passover happens every year, typically in March or April. In, in Israel, it lasts about seven days, but everywhere else is about eight. So I want to I I give you a scripture so you can get a little context before we go into this story. Because if I go into it without you really understanding what's going on, you're going to be like, Jesus overreacted. Or why did he respond that way? So in Exodus chapter 12, it says this. This is Exodus chapter 12, verses 13 through 14. The blood on the doorpost will be a sign to mark the houses in which you live. When I see the blood, come on now, I will, see, I will pass over you and will not harm you. When I, when I punish the Egyptians, you must celebrate this day as a religious festival to remind you of what I've done. To celebrate it all the time. So my first point is this. The world will love you as long as you're not standing on the word of God or preaching it to them. I want to break this down and then we're going to get a little more in depth into it. So Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11, says this. This is right before Jesus got to the temple. So I'm getting y'all ready for the main event, but I'm trying to tell you what happened so y'all can get the full context of the story. So before they got to the temple, look at people. I'm going to show you people. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you, and, and once you find a, a donkey tied there with her coat by her, untie them and bring them to me. Now, if anybody says anything to you, says that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Says to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey and on a coat and full of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them to. So they brought the donkey and the coat and placed their cloaks. Now, a cloak, it's a long robe. Now, that thing is it's a long robe. And it, if you have something like this, it's like authority. You got this, you somebody. You know what I mean? It's almost like having Gucci or whatever that top brand is out there. You got a long Gucci coat. That's what they talking about. <laughs> So they brought the donkey and the coat and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very, before I read, that's amazing how the king sat on something so pride, that, that, that cost a lot, but he sat on it. So the disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. So they brought the donkey and the coat and placed it on the cloaks and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on, on the road while others branches, uh, were other branches from the trees and spread them on the road. So the crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered heaven, the whole city was stirred. Come on now. And they said, who is this? But think about this. Before he got to the temple, everybody was stirred up. Who is this man? You know, but one of the things God told me tonight in this revival, who wants to be stirred up? Because a lot of us have been dormant for a long time. We come into the church house and we leave the same. We, we get up here and we can sing a good song. We can get up here and we can preach a good sermon. I can put a great outline together, but we leave the same. We need to ask God in this revival to stir me up. We need to be expecting. Who will stay at the altar and, altar and say, God, I'm not going to move till you heal me. I'm not going to move till you deliver me. I'm not going to move till I hear from you. 
We need God to stir us up. They didn't, they said, who is he? They didn't even know who he was, but his presence stirred them up. Stirred them up. And they said, who is this? The crowd answered, this is Jesus, the prophet, uh, the prophet of Nazareth. So I want to tell you this. Before he gets to the temple and get to turning things over, this is the scene. Now, everybody praising them at the time. It looks good. They look like they church people. That they know who it is. They look like they got their best on. They put their cloaks on the ground. Come on, that's King Hosanna. That's him. Right before I'm about to tell you to this, take you to this scene, these are the people that were praising him, worshiping him, just like you can be in a choir standing hard as far from him. Just because you in the church don't mean nothing. Just because you worshiping God don't mean nothing. In this revival, God says, stir them up. Because if he came in here right now, what would he say? They were worshiping God, too. They were worshiping him, too. I'm going to tell you these same people what they turned into doing. So Jesus then, after this, Jesus then walks into the gate that leads them right into the outer temple court. It's chaotic. So right before, because before you get to the temple, there was like a court. So it's almost like before you get to the Lloyd Center or any mall, there's like a court. There might be benches out there. There might be, I don't know, food carts, something, before you get into the actual mall. So before they got to the temple, it was called the temple courts. So when Jesus walked up, it was chaotic. He was like, the same people worshiping me, what is going on here? As I get to go to the house of God, the temple, it's chaotic in, the, in front of the church. He said there were people selling pigeons, sheep, and oxen for purchase for sacrifice. Most people have a Roman currency because then you can't, there was, there, it was for the, the Jews, but a lot of people came to worship that day and go, the, for the Passover. But you had to turn, your, it, the currency had to be in, 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 their, in their religion. So you can't just bring anything. So it was, it was, a, it was a temple currency and it was a, something called a tyrant, which was a little bit better. About 90, when I looked at it, about 94% silver. So it was worth a little bit more. That's like you bringing me a quarter, I mean a dime, but I charge you a quarter, right? So I wanted the quarter. You can't bring me a dime, but they were normally charged a dime. So Jesus was getting upset because usually that donkey, that pigeon, the, the sacrificial animals were a dime. Why are y'all charging them a quarter? So th it, he was getting it stirred up already. This is going to lead me to my next point, and we're going to dissect this a little bit more. The second point is this. You have to know that the devil could come into church. God showed me one time when I was praying. It kind of threw me off. I'm not going to lie to you. It threw me off. He showed me in a clip one day. I, this brother, he was praying with me. He said, Johnny, give me your hand. Is there anything you need prayer for? And I reached out to him. You know, I opened up my heart to him. In this clip, man, I'm going through this. I struggle with this. And, you know, sometimes I'm scared and sometimes this. And God showed me in that clip, it was, he turned into a demon. And he said, thank you. Now I know how to fight you. Now I know how to defeat you. But I didn't see it when I vented to this person. But God revealed him later on. That was a demon you were vented to. A demon can be an usher. You don't think. Now, and I'm not talking about our ushers. Just don't. Because you're going to look at them on Sunday. Is that you? Not ours. I'm saying in general. <laughs> was that you? He was it's in general, you guys. <laughs> what I'm saying is in general, okay? <laughs> no. It can be anybody. If God has workers, you got to know Satan has them too. He can come in here with you. He can even hold hands and pray with you, brother. Let's pray. Satan can recite the word. He don't care that you recite it. Do you live it? Do you believe it? Do you have any power? The disciples couldn't cast out demons, and they was with Jesus. So they don't care what the words that you say. They can say them right back to you. You don't believe that. That's what they told him. He knows in here who really is in here for God and who's really in here for show. Think about this. Why? When people come at this threshold of the church, why don't they feel the presence of, the God, of God? Why don't they get rattled like something is in here? 
It's something when I came, it got off of me, and I just want to know Jesus. But they can come sit down in the church. There's no power. They don't leave changed. They don't leave convicted. They don't leave healed. They don't leave delivered. They don't leave changed. How can you come in the house of God and you, it doesn't compel you to want to change? They should feel it as soon as they get on the parking lot. Oh, my God, some is, God is in there. I got to get in there. The people said they, it, it, it got, shook them up. It rattled them. Like, who is he? Just him walking down the street. People in the world should want to come in here. But you know what they see? Judgment. Oh, what he got on. I don't know if he's gay or straight. I don't know if he know God or not. He may be an alcoholic. I don't know. We don't speak to him. We don't love on him. That's what they feel. Because they should feel like, I got to get in this house. We push them out, and this is where they're supposed to be. We forgot we was the same way. And Jesus said, I'm going to guide you to the church. Somebody took you too. To the church. Don't be surprised. I know I was going to end up down here. <laughs> so don't be surprised. What I want y'all to get is this. We have no power. How can a demon sit by you? The Bible says that darkness tries to hide when light get around it. I can't stay with that. I can't dwell here because Jesus is in here. But how can they dwell amongst us? How can they serve with us? How can they eat with you? What God is trying to get us to understand today, a lot of churches, we don't have power. You know why? Because we're becoming more worldly. Listen, if you can get a crowd, I don't care how you're living. If you can get this praise team filled up, brother, you, you got the job. We ain't asked him how he's living. We don't know if he's saved, but he can bring a crowd. He can preach the house down. So I don't care if he's sinning. I don't care what he believes. He can put people in the pews. That's all we care about. And we're pushing Jesus out and bringing the world back in here. They shouldn't feel comfortable sitting in here. What I'm trying to tell you is when I studied this, we're no different. We're turning the prayer house of prayer into a den of robbers. Because they were selling stuff. We had the deacons in the, in, in the temples and the people said they were taking more for their own gain. In some churches in America, they pass the collection plate 35,000 times of service. What you need that for? And there's nothing wrong. I'm not trying to make fun of tithes. I'm not trying to say that every church is this way or every person is this way. But if we're going to be honest, let me read the scripture to you. If y'all think that I'm lying about what I'm saying about where church is ending up, let me read the scripture to you. I want y'all to get this right here. Second Timothy chapter four, verse three through four says this. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine and accurate instruction that challenges them with God's truth. But wanting to have their ears tickled. Tell me something good. Tell me how I'm going to be blessed. Tell me how my season is over. Tell me how 2024 I'm going to get that car and that house that I've been praying for. Tell me how my storm is over. They don't want to hear sound doctrine. They don't want the challenge of the sin. I don't want, that's too uncomfortable. Pastor, switch the subject. I'll come when you're talking about blessings next week. That's what they want. The scripture said this. They want tickling of the ear, something that's pleasing. They will accumulate for themselves teachers. They will accumulate pastors. They accumulate friends. They accumulate people that won't tell them the truth. That's what it says. They will accumulate for themselves teachers and, and another chosen to satisfy their own desires and to support others they hold, the other areas that other people hold. If Jesus, if we had that much power, do you ever notice in the Bible, demons didn't want to hang out with Jesus? In fact, he was fearful of them, right? He even told them, like, listen, don't cast me out of this. Listen, leave me alone. I, I promise you I won't do this. Don't cast me out. If anything, cast me in the swine. They didn't want to hang out with what's going on, brother. No, they can't do that. They knew who had the power. If we think about churches, how many times have you came to church and got delivered? Think about it. How many times have you left the church changed? 
How many sins do we carry every Sunday and we leave and we still got them on us? How many times have we prayed at the altar and still leave with the same issue? How many times have we see people worshiping, looking around at who else is worshiping? This is your time with God. We're losing power and we're turning the house of prayer to a den of robbers. No power. Anybody can come up in here. Any demon could get up here dancing with you. As long as, there's, as, long as you ain't really talking about God and sin. Well, I can do well with you. Yeah, I go to, you want to go to uh, uh, lunch after a church on Sunday? Yeah, I go, girl. Don't care about that. <laughs> as long as you don't have no power, you ain't worrying about their life. I'm going to get to my last point. Everything has to submit to the word of God. I don't, I, the thing about it is you have to preach it, though. <laughs> That's a big piece. It's saying it. We got to stop worrying. God even said that. The enemy will have you looking at how many people came to this revival tonight. Oh, that ain't an effective revival. Y'all should have it packed. But Jesus showed us so many times, you can have the crowd if you want to. But it's the posture of the heart. You can have a full-blown service in here, be packed out, and ain't nobody changed. There's no power. That don't mean nothing. But when you leave, like, listen, God, I just, uh, uh, and they bow out. They're talking in tongues. They get, they change. They get up. They're different. You see people heal from their infirmities. You see when they come depressed, they leave with joy. You see when they come sad, they leave with joy. You have to know that. First of all, don't be deceived. First of all, the enemy knows the word. He knows you. Your flesh is against God. The devil is against God. They tag team you. Right? Your flesh, you've been in your flesh, what? Your whole life? Right? So your flesh knows your tendencies? You know, late at night, what you're thinking about? He knows when you get depressed, you drink. He knows when something bothers you, you go off. He knows it. And the devil watching all your tendencies, all your flaws. What he's talking about right now, if you have the word of God, even the demons that torment you, come against you, will have to fall submission to that. It said every knee will bow. And it say some of them. It didn't say your strongest stronghold still going to be there, but only the weak ones. It said, no, no, every knee going to bow. Every tongue going to confess. You can fight it. You're going to do just like that. That even, all of them got to do it. One day. Let me give you another scripture when we talk about the word of God. Because honestly, it's starting to be, if you look at YouTube, it's starting to be a little sickening, to be honest with you. Some of these pastors will get on a pulpit and preach some stuff and people just believe it because we don't know the word of God. So because you didn't open your Bible, you don't know if I'm speaking the truth. You don't know if I'm from God because you don't know the word. The Bible says you test the spirit. Don't just go by what they say. If the devil tempted Jesus, who are you? You, you, uh, you think, oh, I've been praying all week. He ain't going to get me. Okay, try it. Try it. Without God, you will fail every time. You have to know the word of God, right? Let me give you another scripture. And God is good because honestly, we can prepare something. But when you trust God, when I sat there, in that, I'm going to give you a little anecdote real quick. When I sat there in that seat, Bishop called me this morning. He called me this morning. And I was supposed to be the opening speaker. And I had a five, ten minutes something prepared. But he called me and he said, you're going to be the main speaker. Now, when I tell you, I'm, first of all, I was half asleep. I did this. I said, ah, who? How, why? Who? Me? I haven't put my glasses. I had to see it. I don't know. He was talking to me, but I had to see what he was saying. I put my glasses on. I said, hold on. Me? <laughs> I don't think I can do that. He said, man, just prepare. God, I trust the spirit in the room. God told me, do you know all day long God has been speaking to me? Now, I thought, Pastor, to be honest, I don't know. But all day he was giving me stuff, feeding me stuff. And I sat there and I praised him. He said, Johnny, you thought that was for the congregation, huh? That was for me and you. You had to dig in them scriptures, huh? You had to know the word, huh? You had to get deeper in the story. Sometimes we think our study time is for a word for somebody else. But that thing built me up. 
Got me good. Look at that. Dude, look at that swag. You see how I did that? That's swag. I didn't have that yesterday. I didn't have that this morning. <laughs> that was God. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's the word of God. I love him. I love him. I sat there in that seat and I worshiped him. I worshiped him, Bishop. I said, God, I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know what you're going to say. But I do know what you don't want from me is to come here and not be changed. Come here and not be delivered. Come here and not be healed. Come here and go get by this power and it don't affect you. I'm going to get affected today. So I said, I don't care who's standing beside me. I don't care who come, who don't come. I just lifted my hands and he filled me up. He took away everything that wasn't him and he put what was supposed to be there. When you're around the fire, even the people said it, it shook me up. He didn't minister to them. He didn't give them a scripture. But they said, who was he that shook me up that was walking past here right now? If you don't have that type of effect, you don't have the power that you need. I'm just being honest with you. Because nobody should be walking in a place with no power when you have power of God inside of you. That means one of y'all lying, either God or you. But a church, when we walk inside the church, we need to start seeing healing happen. We need to see people stop worrying about a title. Oh, I got 20 minutes. You got five. I only got five. And she got 15. I only got 15. I've been, man, I'm Bishop so-and-so. I done been here for 25,000 years. I got six degrees. Five minutes? God's like, what is it about? <laughs> They'll get mad at how many minutes they got. But God said, when you have a heart for him, you stay ready, because if you give me one second to talk about how good you've been, you give me five minutes to talk about how good you've been, you give me ten minutes. Because he, do our best is filthy rags in his sight. We would think we worthy. God, I've been reading all week. I've been coming to church. I've been dissecting the scriptures, like you said, casting away demons. I haven't prayed for people. So I deserve 30 minutes. God said, where were you when I made the earth? In the trees and the, and the birds. And the, where were you when I turned you around and brought you out of darkness into my marvelous light? Where were you then? No, matter of fact, where were you when I created you? You were there? You helped me? Where were you? Be grateful. When you know the word of God, the Bible said you got power. You got strength. You got joy. You don't have to know what you're going to say. God said, I'm going to be your lips, brother. Oh, you thought you was preparing for the word. I didn't, you, I didn't use none of them points. Study to show yourself approved. But it's more about you spending that closet time with God, that personal time. So when he speaks to you, it's no longer you. I'm not afraid right now. I wasn't even scared. Pastor, something was going on in my stomach over there. might have been gas. I don't know. But I was scared. But it's, it, it cleared up. When I started preaching, it did clear up. So what I'm saying, I, and listen, I, it was. At first, I about to say, Pastor, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but it stopped. <laughs> I want to read this scripture to you guys here. <laughs> I want to read this scripture to you guys. <laughs> but I want to close out with here, you guys. <laughs> I, I, I want to tell you this. <laughs> I want to read Hebrews chapter 10. Verses 24 through 25, when it talks about the power we should have and the effect that we should have on each other. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as in the habit of some. Like we can get in the habit of meeting, but no, no, no. I want you to stir up love, good works out of each other, not neglect, neglecting to meet, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day drawing near. Philippians 2, verses 10 through 1 says this. That at the name of Jesus, I want you to notice for yourself, because this is going to happen. The Bible can't lie. Prophecy has to fulfill itself. So it's going to happen. This is what it says. That at that time, I mean, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Of those in heaven and of those on earth and those under earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Us gathering at the temple is where it all began. Where we sang praises unto his name. Where we taught, we were taught the word of God. Where deliverance happened. 
Healing happened. Well, we left change for the better. Going to church with our grandma, grandpa, that old school thing. We enjoyed doing that. Even if they had, you know, they had uh, children's church downstairs or wherever. We enjoyed doing that. The temple, it was a church. So God wants us to get back to a place where we turn his house back into the house of prayer. And stop being robbers, the den, robbers of uh, den robbers. Making it about ourselves. Making it about a position. Making it about being seen. Making it about anything, any agenda other than God's is wrong. They did it then. Selling all kind of stuff. That's just like us having a table outside and we selling our T-shirts and giving out cards and, and we promoting ourselves. It is nothing wrong with that. But when my, that's my motivation. Some of us don't even come to church if we don't serve. Some of us don't even want to come to church unless somebody acknowledges us. Some people don't even come to church if we feel like I don't like who's speaking. But it's about them. It's about God. Because if I came to the church expecting God to move, you, I don't need you. I don't even need you to acknowledge I walked through the door. Listen, me and him been talking. And I told him this morning, I'm coming. Because I bet I'm going to get what I need to get. Because I'm going to come to this altar and I'm going to stay there. And I'm going to stay where God wants me in the posture that God, I'm not leaving until I come di leave different. That's the house of prayer. That's what it's about. Whenever your motives are different and it's not about God, you're going to lose power. God is going to be like, I'm going to let you have it. I'm going to step out the way. Since you think you got it, you can't change your heart. You can't even change your own heart. You can't change your ways. You can't, even, you can't change her ways, your, your ways. That's me. But we have to flip it. And I'm it may be a tough message because a lot of churches today are not preaching the word of God. They don't believe that God is still a healer. The word is true. Always remember this, you guys. The world will love you if you don't stand for Christ and his word. The devil can come into church with you. But most importantly, everything has to submit to the word of God. Let me leave y'all with this. If you don't believe that God is who he says he is, you know what the Bible told you to do? Taste and see it. Try me. Because my word will never return back to me void. I, oh, I'm going to do everything I said. Taste and see. You got to get back to doing it God's way. We in his way. Will in his way. Yes. It's all about God. I want to lead you guys here and we're going to pray. God is sending us all to have the same message. I didn't know what Lisa was talking about, Minister Lisa. We, but we're on the same accord. That's how you know it's God. If God is waking y'all up, awakening, saying, listen, everything that you're imagining your life to be, people that come in here's life to be, can happen. If you stop turning this into something that is not. Don't worry about the numbers of people that come. They're going to come and go. Because the, the, you think the devil wants them to stay where they are? He's going to fight them. It's, it's a, you don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Whatever they came in here with wants them to stay where they are. I've been having him for a long time struggling, and I'm going to try to keep him there. But that's between them and God, but they're in the right place. We need to be loving them when they come through the door. Start worrying about if they like boys and boys and girls and girls. That's God. But if you do what you're supposed to do right when they hit that threshold, uh, threshold ooh. Who was that? What was that? God will change them. I want everybody to stand and we're going to pray out tonight. God is a good God. He's a good God. And he deserves all the praise and honor. If you expect God to move, Pastor, I might need you on this one. I want everybody to come to the front that says, God, I want you. I'm not going to leave until I get what I came for. 
because I know this is the house of prayer. I know this is where I need to be. But if I expect God to move, he will. If I know he's a powerful God, then there's nothing too hard for God. You, I want you to come to the front and we're going to pray for you. Does anybody want to come? Anybody want to come? You're in the right place. This is what God loves, the praises of his people. So if you guys want prayer, I want all the ushers, I mean, it's kind of officially off duty, but if you guys want to come up here, you guys can come pray. Pray for anybody that comes up. What's a prayer? Oh, okay.